Hello, future students. Um, today we will be covering the topics on biology for the admission test for Deverson Medical School. Um, the topics start with the basic structure and characteristics of the eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are four animal cells, plant cells, fungi, and protists. The focus will probably be on animal and Plant cells, we need to know the organelles, the different parts of the cell, and the function. For example, the mitochondria, the nucleus, the uh, chloroplast, etc. Um, we move on to the second topic, the basic metabolic pathways like glycolysis, oxidation, photosynthesis, and the importance of enzymes in these reactions. Uh, will be required. So the steps of these reactions, the purpose of them, what exactly happens in different steps. Number three, we have DNA and its role in heredity, structure of the DNA, the genetic code, the replication of the genetic material. As you see in this picture, the different sugar backbone, this different um, nucleotides in the and the sugar phosphate backbone how it's held together and how we go from dna to proteins um, through transcription and translation uh, four and five are very uh, interconnected uh, cell division one and two between mitosis and meiosis the differences why we do mitosis why do we why do we do meiosis and we all know that meiosis is cell division for gametes for sex cells whereas mitosis is cell division for the rest of the um, cells in the body that are not related to uh, sexual reproduction Number six and seven, again, linked. They are genetics one and two. So they're going to include the laws of Mendel, the Mendelian laws, which are three laws of segregation, independent assortment, as well as law of in dominance. Um, through these three laws, you will learn about phenotypes, genotypes, genes, alleles, dominant recessive, different types of inheritance, uh, linkage, and crossover. Um, we move on to section eight. How do we get to protein from DNA, the process of translation, um, and all the components at messenger RNA, uh, rRNA, transfer RNA, ribosomes, and how and what role they play into the process of uh, getting DNA to protein. Um, the last part, which seems like excessive, uh, an excessive portion here, but it's really covering all the body systems. So we start with the human respiratory system, the human respiratory system, which includes our nose, our trachea and our lungs. Uh, we move on from the anatomy and physiology of the respiratory system to the circulatory system, which includes your heart um, and your arteries and veins, and it's responsible for uh, delivering blood to the entire body and the blood carries oxygen and other nutrients. Uh, moving on from that to the digestive system, uh, the digestive system is responsible for digestion of food. It includes or starts in the mouth, ends in the anus, includes several organs like your stomachs, your intestines. Uh, moving from that, we go to the excretory system. The excretory system, uh, which basically is involved uh, with the kidneys uh, and their function in the excretion of uh, urine. Um, moving from there, we start talking about homeostasis. Homeostasis is the balance in the human body, how we keep things balanced despite changes like temperature, metabolism, energy production, so on and so forth. Homeostasis is split between our nervous system, which is composed of a central and a peripheral nervous system, central having your brains, your spinal cord, peripheral having your peripheral nerves, um, and your endocrine system, which is a group of organs and glands that are responsible for uh, hormone secretion and regulation of several functions in the body, hence homeostasis. Uh, then we move on to the skeletal system or the musculoskeletal system, uh, the function of the muscle cells and their use for movement of the human body. And we end with one of our most important systems, our immune system, which uh, is hard to draw because it's all over the body and how it is involved in humoral and cellular 
immune responses in the human body. Now, all this information is uh, coming from one uh, book, and that textbook is called Life, the Science of Biology, the eighth edition. Uh, this is the book by Sedava Heller, Oriens, Purves, and Hillis. Um, and it is uh, the uh, Sinauer Associates um, from Gordonsville, Virginia, USA. So if you want to use this book for preparation, uh, feel free to use it. Now we have some questions, and they're basically sample questions for the test. Before we start with the questions, um, a very good piece of advice that I have for you guys is because it is multiple choice, in multiple choice, there's always options that you know right away are wrong. Go ahead and eliminate these first. That way you know that you don't have to worry about them or think about them anymore. Also, in all or none questions, make sure you find at least two that are correct or two that are incorrect, and that makes the choice of all or none of the above easy. Question one is about meiosis and how it affects ploidy. Ploidy is how many um, alleles we have after cell division is over. Now we know in mitosis we start with two, we end up with two, whereas in meiosis we start with two, we end up with one. So we know that it's either the same or reduced. So automatically we can get rid of duplicated, we can get rid of triploid to tetraploid, which are too high of numbers, and multiplied, which means it's going to increase. We know we have the option of the same or reduce diploid to haploid since it is meiosis, not mitosis, then A is the correct answer right here. Question number two, which of the following statements about the electron transport chain is true? Now, if we know anything about the electron transport chain, in the name electron transfer, there will be electrons that are being passed. And usually, how do we pass electrons? Using redox reactions, reduction oxidation reactions occurring at the same time. So automatically, option B is correct. Now, I know that usually the final receptor or receiving of oxygen of electron is oxygen. And that's option C. So to me, automatically, everything in this question is correct because two options are correct, which makes all of the above correct. Number three, which is the first structure stimulated in a reflex arc? Now, a reflex arc is talking about the arc of a reflex a reaction that we do based on a sensory reception that we receive. So we receive sensory information with our five senses, hence the name senses, our eyes, so sight, um, our nose, smell, our taste through our mouth, our hearing, through our ears and then our touch through our hands. A receptor receives a stimulus, sends the stimulus to the brain using a sensory neuron or what is known as an afferent neuron with the letter A because remember A for arriving into the brain and then the brain makes a decision based on that stimuli and sends a message using the motor neuron or the E ferret exiting the brain to a effector, the person that the organ that will take the action based on the brain's order. So this makes an easy answer. The receptor is the beginning, the end is the effector, and they go through all these steps. Now, question four, which one represents the largest portion of the human cerebral cortex? Keep in mind, I added these pictures for you. The pictures were not obviously on the test for the ease of explanation. Um, I know automatically the biggest portion of the cerebral cortex is your frontal lobe. It's right here in the front. Your um, temporal lobe is on the side, parietal on top, occipital in the lower back. Um, so automatically I choose frontal and I don't even need to look at the rest of the information. This is an easy fact question, fact checking. In kidneys, the loop of Henle can be found. Now we know the kidney has calyxes. They have pelvises, 
cortexes and medulla, a cortex and a medulla. So we know that none of that is wrong because all these are portions of the kidney and the loop of Henle is in the kidney. Now the calyx and the pelvis are uh, urine collectors. So they don't usually have any organelles or any parts to them. That leaves us with the cortex and the medulla. Um, and as we see in the diagram, um, we have the, uh, the uh, distal proximal tubes, um, Bowman's capsule inside the glomerulus um, with afferent, efferent arterioles. And then we have in the other part, the collecting ducts and the loop of Henle, um, showing us where the loops of Henle lie within the um, medulla and within the cortex. So number six is asking us what an allele is. And as we know, an allele is simply just one form of a DNA sequence. So when we have a chromosome, a chromosome can have two different alleles for the same attribute or the same trait. So it is not a frequent form. It is not a less frequent form. So we can get rid of these two. A truncated form of a gene is usually a mutation. A non-expressed DNA sequence is definitely not related to an allele. Allele is a general term that covers one or two, uh, one or more, two or more forms of a certain gene. And as you see, heterozygous, homozygous, and uh, homozygous and heterozygous in the diagram. Uh, number seven, the presence of an enzyme. How does the presence of an enzyme in reactions that occur inside the body help? Now, we know an enzyme is a catalyst. A catalyst is something that speeds up a reaction. And reactions usually need uh, activation energy and the amount of energy that activates the reaction. The, uh, an enzyme usually takes that amount and reduces it. And when it does, it makes the reaction go faster. We know it's not the energy of the reactants or the products because an enzyme does not alter the reactants or the products of a reaction. Uh, what is an anticodon? This tends to be a bit tricky because people always mix it up between mRNA and tRNA. We automatically know it's not part of a DNA, so we scratch A and B. But is it on the tRNA, RNA, or mRNA? It is the complementary sequence on the tRNA that is complementary to the mRNA. So what's on the mRNA is a codon, whereas what's on the tRNA is the anti-codon. Try to remember anti has a T and tRNA has a T, whereas mRNA does it to remember where the anticodon lies. Number nine, which of the following can occur in the nucleus? We know the nucleus has DNA material, and the only thing we synthesize from DNA is RNA through the process of transcription. So we know automatically it's only RNA synthesis. Everything else happens elsewhere. Cellulose is from plant cells. It's what makes the cell wall. So that happens in the uh, cell wall of the plant, starch in the chloroplast, also in plant cells. Um, protein synthesis occurs outside the cell using the RNA that was made inside the nucleus. And fatty acid is also usually in the cytoplasm of the cell. And finally, which organelles contain genetic material? Now, I know you want to rush and choose B, nucleus, but that is only in animal cells. In plant cells, we have three kinds of DNA, as you see in this picture. We have nuclear DNA, we have mitochondrial DNA, and we have chloroplast DNA, which makes options A, B, and C correct. Um, all three locations. They didn't tell us what type of cell. They just said which organelles. So we have to assume they're asking about in general. Now, there are a couple questions that are short answer. The first one asking about Mendelian's first law. It is the law of segregation, which states that two alleles from each genes are placed in different gametes. What does that mean in simple language? If I'm inheriting eye color from my parents, I will get one copy of their eye color from my dad and one copy of the eye color from my mom. Because if my mom has, uh, my mom's eye color is too um, uh, 
alleles and my dad's eye color is two alleles, I will get one random copy from each of them and that's going to create my eye color. Um, and then transcription, what is transcription? Uh, we've already mentioned transcription is the process by which we take the DNA that's in the nucleus and we transcribe it, we make a transcript of it. And that's the RNA and that transcript eventually needs to be translated so we can make protein out of it outside the nucleus. This was it for our session today. I hope it was beneficial. Good luck with your 